and make dinner with me for my family on a school night while we answer some chatty Q&A, ask me anything questions that you guys sent in. I am Ree from mummyof4.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel on a super chatty kind of vlog. I cannot tell you the number of comments and DMs I get about food and what to make for your family to keep it simple, that everyone will eat, that's affordable, and it just seems that it's this universal problem <laughs> as adults of just knowing what to make for dinner and it's a daily grind, isn't it? So let me know in the comments if you can relate. So I'm gonna pop you guys down here. Right, now we can chat. So tonight I'm going to do a Bisto roast chicken tray bake. So this dish is gonna fit all the criteria that I need for a family meal. It's simple to do, so I can have a good old chat to you while I'm doing it. It's affordable because I know that is a massive consideration for everyone at the moment, how we can just make our meal times out a little bit more affordable and Perhaps most importantly, it's delicious. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, and yes, if you are one of those people that's like, when are you doing grocery hauls again, Ree? Um, well, we'll get to that later in the video with some of the, the questions, because I've had a question about that. But I have made many, 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 many grocery hauls on this channel, and I think in most of them, I have bought this, which is the Bisto gravy I normally use. So this is the traditional Bisto traditional gravy, which is just the one I normally buy. I don't know why, I don't normally get the four chicken one because if we are having gravy dinner, chicken dinner, Sunday dinner, what do you call it by the way? Gravy dinner? I think that's what I used to call it when I was little. Sunday dinner, but it's not Sunday, it's a school night. Chicken dinner, obviously if it's just chicken or beef dinner or whatever. Great. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you call it. But when we have Sunday dinner, chicken dinner, roast dinner, that's the other name for it, isn't it? Then it always tends to be chicken. It's very rare that our gravy dinner would be something else. So why is it only now that I'm thinking to buy the one with chicken? Please tell me I'm not the only one <laughs> that does this. I think it's just habit, you know, habit shopping. So anyway, I've got the chicken one. But other Bisto bits I absolutely love, before we get going, we are gonna get going with cooking in a second, honestly. I use both of these. Now the, the pepper sauce, I can't always get everywhere. So when I get that, I always stock up with it. And the curry sauce mix, the curry sauce mix is like a chip shop curry sauce, which is really, really good for like a chip shop fake away. And the pepper sauce is like great kind of with steak. So those are an aside, nothing to do with what we're doing tonight, but I do love them, they were in my cupboard. This was also in my cupboard, not using that tonight. Tonight we're doing chicken. So shall we forget on to what we're actually doing tonight? Stop chatting quite so much, get on with some of the making dinner and then I can also get on with answering some of the questions that you lovely people sent in on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, by the way, make sure you are so that you've got the opportunity to submit questions like these for future videos. So the ingredients for this Bisto chicken tray bake are super simple, which I love and affordable, bonus but it's gonna be delicious, which is, you know, exactly what we want. So we've got obviously our Bisto. We have got a chicken and a tray to do the tray bake. Some carrots and potatoes, which I am going to peel while we have a little chat. I'm going to preheat the oven to 180 because it's a fan oven, but adjust accordingly to your own oven. So the chicken itself, when cooking from chilled, which mine is, needs to cook for 40 minutes per kilo plus an additional 20 minutes. So my chicken is 1.228 kilograms, meaning I need to cook it in one hour and 15 minutes. Now, I did not do that maths. It said it on the packet that came with the chicken. So if you buy it from a butcher's or something without any instructions on it, you may have to Google how long to cook a chicken per kilo. But if you buy one from any kind of major supermarket, they generally have timings and instructions and weights and things on them. So let's get the oven preheated and we can get chatting. The oven's reached its temperature. I pop the chicken in. Now halfway through, we need to add the potatoes and the carrots. So I'm gonna peel those and chop them up while I speak to you. The first question, and this is really super sweet. You're all so lovely, really, in the comments. Is how are you? So thank you for those of you. I know there were several of you that, that asked. Um, I'm okay, yeah, good. Um, busy, busy, busy. We have got a couple of, how do I say this? Um, family hiccups going on in the background but I think I've said this before like there are certain things I don't want to discuss on here because it's not my place to so if it's if it's not my place to then I don't discuss it but then I worry that I'm coming across as maybe being a bit cryptic which I don't I'm not doing that on purpose it's just me trying desperately to navigate 
doing the right thing. So, oh, hang on, I didn't put a timer on the chicken. Ah, that was stupid, isn't it? We'll just stick a quick little timer on that for like, how many minutes has it been already? There we go. I stuck it on for 35 minutes, that'll do. We've got to check that the juices are running clear at the end anyway. That's just the first timer for getting these veggies in. And to be honest, the rate I'm going today, with all the chatting to you guys, it's gonna take me that long just to peel a couple of potatoes and some carrots. Because and talking, not doing. Anyway, next question. Do you ever doubt yourself or your abilities? You always seem so confident. Um, all the time. Literally all the time. Imposter syndrome is massive and um, when i first started doing all this let's just take what i do for my job for example i used to think oh, i can't call myself a blogger i can't call myself like who am i to say i'm doing this and i totally felt like a fake and a fraud and i convinced myself when i got to a certain level of i don't know number of subscribers or i'd been doing it a certain amount of time i'd feel like I knew what I was doing, I'd feel like less of a fraud. And I'm here to tell you, it just kind of gets new level, new devil, to be honest. I definitely used to look at people with channels like the same size as mine is now and think, well, when I'm, you know, when my channel's like that, then I'll feel like I know what I'm doing. I mean, obviously I largely know roughly what I'm doing, but because I don't really know anyone that does what I do, not in real life anyway. I have some, I'm very lucky to have some nice online friends that do similar things, but because I don't really know anyone in real life that does what I do, it's difficult because I haven't really got like someone to ask, you know, what do you do about this or whatever? And although I did, I did business studies in university, which you would have thought would prepare me for what I'm doing now. The job I'm doing now, like content creation, blogging and making videos and stuff, didn't exist when I was in university. There was no such thing. So yeah, I, I doubt myself and my abilities all the time. And that's just professionally. As a mother, same Z's, same Z's. I used to think when I get to a certain stage on there, what I'm doing. And yeah, I've got a lot of systems in place. And as I get to my fourth child, I've got it a lot more figured out than I did with my first, I'm not gonna lie. However, children love to throw you a curveball. And as soon as you think you've got one stage sus, then the next stage comes along. Or you think, oh, I've got that stage, stage sus, and then the next one comes along, like you get to the same stage with a different child, and they're totally different. They're totally different. And they just, they throw curveballs at you. Or, you know, a global pandemic hits, and you think you're kind of all swimming along nicely, and then actually you've got to adjust to all that, and then you've got to adjust the children and go back to school. And I don't know, life is just one big adjustment. So. I can't remember what the question was. No. Do I doubt myself? Yes. And I was on a um, a client call the other day because I do those from time. I like I don't really advertise them much um, because it's not like part of my core business. But I do. I used to do a lot more um, like social media marketing, so helping small businesses with their social media marketing. That's kind of what I did before I started doing what I'm doing now, which is actually another one of the questions about that I had in my DMs. What did you do before? I used to do marketing and then I did more specifically social media marketing for other people. Anyway, I was on this client call with a, a lady who wants to start doing sort of similar stuff to what I'm doing, slightly different niche. And she was really, really lovely. And she said, you know, how do you get over the fear of like saying the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing? Because obviously you don't feel like that because you feel, seem so confident. It's like, well, I'm confident talking to camera now because I do it so much. That's just a practice thing over and over. But from a point of view of knowing what I'm doing or doubting myself, I still doubt myself all the time. Imposter syndrome is massive. So if anyone knows how to banish it forever, I'm all ears. I am all ears. So we're getting there now. Look, we've peeled some potatoes. We're on to some carrots. We're actually going to chopping something in a minute. On to the next question. It's gonna be one of those really chatty videos, isn't it? Where I just talk rubbish a lot. Okay, what is the next one? The problem is every time I touch my phone, and I'm gonna have to sanitize my hands in between. I'm not, I have washed my hands since touching the chicken. Don't panic. Right, quite a few about what is Dylan studying in uni and how, how are we doing as a family adjusting? How is he doing? How are we doing? So we'll just take all these questions as just as a block and I'll, I'll chat about that. So obviously I'm just really worried about him going. He's young and he's young, so he only just turned 18. He's doing computer animation. I'm not gonna share exactly where he is, just as I don't share exactly where we live, just because as much as most of you who actually follow me are absolutely adorable and wonderful, the internet can be a funny place, can't it? So just in the interest of being sensible, I guess, that's kind of the decision I've come to, to, um, to just 
I'll tell you what he's doing, but not what he's doing it. He's doing computer animation. My main kind of thing with choosing a course was just choose something that you love. Choose something you wouldn't mind doing as a hobby. And he's always enjoyed doing like computer animation and stuff and has done that as a hobby in the past. Hopefully he's really gonna enjoy that. Obviously he's like in the very early days of being there and settling in, but he seems to have made some really nice friends. He seems to be really happy. And I'm hearing from him less and less, which makes me sad but probably means he's having a ball. You know, we're in touch every day. We at least text every day. He's no longer phoning me nine times a day, which is probably for the best because the first few days I was a bit worried how well he's gonna settle. Cause it must be difficult, you know, especially after the pandemic, going out and meeting, meeting people and oh, throwing things on the floor. I think a lot of people have got a lot more, especially seeing teenagers, like social anxiety about mixing and things. I'm not talking about like my child in particular, but I think teenagers in general have struggled with this. Let me know down in the comments if you kind of have found this with teenagers in your life. But it, I think it's been really hard on them because they've missed some really key times in their life where they could and should be socializing and doing all those things. And Dylan's year specifically was the year that didn't get to do their proper GCSEs, didn't get to do the proper first year of their A-levels. It's been a tough year for that year group. So this is the first like probably normal thing, normal kind of rite of passage thing he's had since COVID. So yeah, he's enjoying it. I'm confident that he's picked a course that he's gonna love, which is great. We are keeping busy, we're keeping busy. That's what I'm doing. I am trying not to think about it too much trying to stay busy, which isn't difficult because it's got quite a lot going on. The little ones FaceTime him quite a lot and send the, like funny text messages and stuff um, from the iPad. So they're kind of taking photos and sending those to him, FaceTiming, which is nice. They're doing better than the day he left where I had to peel the girls off his leg. That was um, difficult and challenging. It's helped that we've kind of turned the uh, move into a little bit of a positive. That room, that was Dylan's room exclusively and is now Dylan's room slash living room when he's home and the children's playroom when he's in uni. So that's been a nice kind of distraction for them. They've really enjoyed using that space. If you saw the decorating the playroom vlog, you'll know that they've, they've really enjoyed that and that was a nice project. Um, the sofa bed is there now for whenever Dylan wants to come home. All I could do is collapse the tent and then it's like a living room for him with TV and stuff in the day and you can turn it into a bedroom in the night, a bit like you would in a touring caravan, really. But yeah, if you saw the vlog where I moved him to uni, I was a bit of a mess on the day and I kept um, holding it together and then losing it again. So there was one of the other mums, I can't remember if I said this in the vlog, there was another one of the mums there that was like, how are you doing? How are you coping? And I was like, go, go, it's fine to lose that. And then I had to go outside and lose it quietly. I felt a bit like um, when I first dropped them all off at nursery and I had to just hold it together until I was out of sight. I felt like that was the right thing to do. Right, so we've got the carrots. My children have to learn Welsh in school, even though we're not Welsh speakers. Moron in Welsh. Do you know that? Carrots are morons. Anyway, um, what was the next question? We're chit-chatting a lot, aren't we guys? We're chit-chatting a lot. How did you know mainstream was right for your children struggling with an EHCP? Right. Um, I think you've just got to kind of judge it. It's not just what's right for the children and it's what's which school is right for the children. So some mainstream schools may cater really well for children with additional needs and some mainstream schools will not cater well for children with additional needs. So it really depends more on the school rather than being as cut and dry as mainstream or like a specialist school, in my opinion. So um, I would say if you've got schools that you're looking at, whichever schools those might be. Now, I was lucky because by the time I realized I needed, we had additional needs, I was already really familiar with the school and really happy with the school um, because obviously my eldest was there. So my suggestion would be speak to people who've got children in those schools that you're considering. Ask to go and look around the schools, speak to the parents, speak to the teachers look at what's on the walls, is it a friendly welcoming environment? And then you've got like kind of a feel for the school and then talk to the school about your child's specific needs and whether the school feels that that school will be able to meet their needs or whether they need a more specific school. But that is really gonna be, I would say, not as cut and dry as, is it mainstream, is it specialist school? 
in my opinion. I'm not an expert on this by any stretch and I'm sure there'll be people in like your local council perhaps you can speak to, but that's what I would do. Just get a feel for the school, visit, talk to parents, get like a wider feel from it than just their website. So next question, did you breastfeed? Um, yes, I did. I breastfed all my children. Now, if you go way back to the start of my channel, I mean, maybe not right at the start, I can't remember. So I started my channel in 2017. Um, and in fact, I had another question about something along the lines of why is it you do what you do? So we'll like combine the two here. The two questions are going into one answer. Um, so basically I started off um, the channel, basically I wanted to talk to younger me, as in me that was up in the night Googling, how on earth am I gonna manage with a routine? I've run into breastfeeding problems, what is the answer? I wanted to put together all the things that I had to find out the hard way into like an easy resource for mums who don't have to struggle like I had to. So that was the end of my why, and then obviously as a bonus, I needed to be able to work from home, and this is obviously something to do from home. So I started the channel back in 2017, well, there may be some videos about breastfeeding back then. This is this is where the two things kind of cross over. Because I definitely had some issues breastfeeding Will. He was the one that um, I ran into some issues with and I became like really obsessed with finding out all the information about how to make breastfeeding easier. Um, he was query failure to thrive. I have got a really detailed vlog. I've got several detailed vlogs, I think way back at the beginning of my channel. So the reason these two <laughs> things cross over is I started the channel in 2017, realized YouTube's really hard to film when you've got a really small baby on your hip, um, and I sort of shelved it, and the channel was totally dormant until 2019, when I was like, I'd forgotten how hard YouTube is. It can't be that difficult. I know, I'll put out three videos a week, and I kind of made a pledge to do that, and that's what I've been doing ever since. I definitely did videos about breastfeeding after that 2019 mark, so, looking for the breastfeeding videos there's probably a playlist if there's a playlist I will link it definitely I had lots and lots of videos where I talked about it I talked about the problems we ran into like the stories of it all and hopefully some tips and things I also did lives over on my Facebook back when I used to do that because lives are easier because you don't have to edit them I also know I have a lot of blog posts about this I've written extensively about it because I was writing on my blog even when I wasn't filming for my channel so there's definitely extensive resources if you're struggling over on there. Do you have many school mum friends? I feel the pressure to make friends at the school gates. Um, it can be really difficult when your children start school, can't it? Because you are like the new girl at the school, same as your children are. I do, I'm very lucky to have some good school mum friends. I've got a lot of people I know, like a lot, a lot of people I know and I'm on all the WhatsApp groups. If I'm honest, I'm on so many WhatsApp groups because sometimes there's one for year group, and then there's one for the split class, and then there's one for the PTA, and then I'm on so many WhatsApp groups, I literally have to meet them or I wouldn't get any work done because it's just ping, ping, ping. If I answered every WhatsApp message from school, the second it came through, I would never get any work done, ever. So <laughs> it is difficult to keep in touch with everybody, but definitely worth making the effort as soon as you can as difficult as that may be to make that effort, you'll be glad when you've done it because then obviously parties and things are more bearable because you've got someone to chat to. So it can be a challenge, but you know, stick with it. So okay, now we've got our carrots chopped, we've got our potatoes chopped. We're gonna stick those in with the chicken in not very long when that beeps. And then we can answer some more questions actually we can answer another couple of questions i'll just try and speed them along a little bit before we have got to do the next bit of dinner uh can you bring bring back grocery hauls um i will be bringing back grocery grocery hauls i'm not going to be doing them weekly because i worry they get repetitive and you know everyone's like oh they're not repetitive we like them but i worry they get repetitive and then people that are more negative on the internet um, and like oh that's really repetitive and i'm like i know but everyone asks for them so i'm just sort of stuck I know I can't please everybody, but um, I worry that they're repetitive, but then obviously I'm looking at them a lot more than you guys are. I buy quite similar things. Like I said, I always buy biscuit, for example. Like, I always buy that. When we run out of it, oh, well, when we go into the backup, because we always have one to use and one for backup, I always buy another one. So I worry they're repetitive, but if you really want to see them, I will bring them back. I think for making it a bit more interesting, for me at least, um, or at least for me to feel it's like a bit more different, then I could go into store. Now, Last time I did that, I got told off, didn't I? I got told off in Tesco's for filming, but then I did have my big camera and the gimbal and stuff. If I use this little camera I'm filming on now, perhaps it's a bit less. So yeah, it, I will be bringing them back, but they won't be weekly. 
they'll just be every now and again, you know? Next question, is this your forever home? I don't know. We love it here and I can't see any reason that we'd want to move because everything really suits us as we have it right now, but never say never. Advice for someone doing a kitchen renovation, e.g. essential cupboard space ideas. Um, my best advice is watch my kitchen organization tour type thing. Although I probably need to do updated one of those. There's probably a few things that I would change. But the biggest thing that we did, I used baskets to sort the inside of the cupboard. We were gonna pay for like pull out things inside the tall cupboard and we bin those off in favor of just having lots and lots of shelves and then putting baskets in them. It worked out cheaper. And I think we ended up fitting more stuff in the cupboard that way rather than having the pull out thing. I do like the pot thing. You know what, like the swivelly pot thing I have in, is that what it's called, the swivelly pot thing that I have in the corner of my kitchen. I do like that because it means you can get all the way into the corner. So some things are worth buying as add-ons and some things are not. So we didn't think the bin was worth having as an add-on and we ended up having to put that on afterwards. Um, the biggest thing is think about where you're gonna be in your kitchen. So in our last kitchen, and you can do this even if you're not doing a kitchen renovation. In our last house, we had everything just in the wrong cupboards and it was really silly. So it wasn't until I moved here, I was like, well, no, I need to think about where I'm gonna be standing to cook and being able to grab everything. So this kitchen is set up well because when you're using it, it's really user-friendly because everything's exactly where you need it to be. So, you know, I've got the plates near the dishwasher. So you're emptying the dishwasher, but it's easy to put the plates away. In the last house, it's like they were in the furthest possible cupboard, which was ridiculous. So think about where you're gonna be using things when you're standing empty the dishwasher, wherever it might be, and keep surfaces as clear as possible. So have as much as you can off the countertop. So we've got our microwave built in. Um, we've got a cupboard with my husband's coffee machine hidden in it because the clearer the countertops, the easier it is to keep clean and tidy and clutter just attracts more clutter in my experience. So I thought that was gonna be a quick answer. <laughs> that was longer. Have you started to plan for Christmas? Um, in only in like note, mental note form, Christmas is such a big, thing for us because it's not just Christmas it's actually three birthdays so I treat Christmas as a block because three out of four of my children have a birthday within oh that's the beeping have a birthday within um three weeks of Christmas so I plan for Christmas and their birthdays all together so it feels like kind of a mammoth task so no I've not started yet but I will be starting soon right I have to put you guys down so I can actually get the chicken out so now what I'm gonna do I told you this is gonna be simple is pop the chopped carrots and the chopped potato in with the chicken in the tray because it's a tray bake. And then oh, once the timer goes off again, all we're gonna have to do is bring it out, boil the kettle to prepare the best bit, in my opinion, the bistro, and that's it. Simple. So let's get this done, get it back in. And then I think I better get the children to come and lay the table because it won't be long before we get to dishing up. for the next um, time I've got to jiggle the veg. Is that an official cookery term? Um, one of the questions I had, um, I think it was in my DMs, not in that sticker thing, um, was do we always eat together? Um, and how do we manage this with timings and things? We're very lucky, obviously I work from home, so I just fit things around the children. So my days start very early and then I can finish early and then I'm around to make dinner and eat with the children. My husband generally gets home in time, not always, generally gets home in time to eat with us. And we generally all eat together for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's a nice opportunity to sit and chat and find out about the children's days or whatever, just catch up. But secondly, we do actually all eat together rather than I know some people do like feed the children and then feed the grown ups later. I don't do this for a few reasons. One, twice the work. So I would rather just make dinner once and clear up once. 
much easier and then obviously we get the opportunity to all sit together and eat together as well which is amazing but second i'd be starving like i know most grown-ups eat really really late because i'm so used to eating with the children about i was five normally i would be passing out hungry and snacking right up till dinner i'd be picking up the children's food at five half five if i didn't eat until a more grown-up time and when we do ever go out for a meal like a grown-up meal without the children i'm always famished and i have to eat something with the children before I go, which is insane. Next quick question. Should we do another one? Have we got time to do another one? I think we've got time to do another one. Tips on decluttering, let go of items you don't really need. Um, I think I've written a blog post about this, but I could potentially turn it into a total how-to decluttering video if you want. I've done lots of declutter with me's where I chat through tips. I'll be doing a lot more declutter with me type stuff because I really want to go through and sort out the whole house again. I think the main thing you've got to realize about decluttering is it's not a one and done process. We moved here two and a half years ago now and I totally, I did so much decluttering and it all needs doing again because more stuff has come into the house. The children have grown out of things or in different phases. So just accepting it's like a cycle that you have to go through like washing but I think the biggest tip is focusing on how you want to feel at the end so knowing like I hate decluttering but I love having decluttered if that makes sense I love it when it's done the process is always like ugh. so focus on the feeling that you want at the end and for me this tip isn't going to suit everyone that's the only way I can make myself do it if you've seen my decluttering videos I always tip everything out and then I'm like what have I done but it's the only way to make myself do it because if I don't tip everything out if I think I'm not going to tip it out, I'll just like tackle this little corner. I'll tackle one or two things and like get overwhelmed and stop. So if you really want to go for it, tip everything out. Or you can take the other method, which I did in a like a 10 minute organize with me video, which I'm going to do more of those as well, is just tackle it in small chunks. So you either think, right, I'm going to do a day, I'm going to tip everything out and I'm going to really get through it and it's going to feel, that will feel amazing, like amazing when it's finished. Or you just set yourself like a list of little tasks like, drawer in the kitchen, covered under the stairs, or even like half, so we've got drawers under the stairs, like I tackled one of the drawers under the stairs in that video, just one, not even all of them, because I had 10 minutes. So you can break it down to 10 minutes if that suits you, if that's what suits you and your time constraints, or you could really go for it in a whole day, which will be a lot more satisfying, a lot more rewarding, and perhaps will spur you on to do it a bit more. I think knowing what to let go of, it's like, do you love it or do you really need it? And then if you don't, then why have you got it? Very Marie Kondo, does it spark joy? You know, does it, does it spark joy? If it doesn't spark joy, it needs to go. So that's the beeper scene too and the chicken jiggled, I guess. <laughs> um, that sounds wrong, doesn't it? Um, another couple of questions, just a couple. I think before I have to serve up dinner. What are we enjoying on TV at the moment? We're re-watching, well, I'm re-watching because it's one of those like lost that goes back and forth and back and forth that you can re-watch. This Is Us. I loved it the first time I watched it without my husband, kind of like when I was cooking. So that's what I'd be doing now. If I wasn't talking to you guys, I'd like have something on on my phone or whatever, with like one headphone in. Um, so while I was cooking or sorting washing, whatever, I was watching that. Um, I loved it. We're re-watching that and he's watching it with me this time. It's amazing. If you haven't seen it, amazing. We're actually watching the Game of Thrones spin-off, House of the Dragon. Um, it's a spin-off of Game of Thrones. I must admit, I was so late to the party with Game of Thrones. I think we caught it just before season seven started. So we binged six seasons. The first couple of episodes, my sister recommended it. And I was like, I'm not going to like this. It's just, it's not my thing. I'm not going to like it. I was really resistant to watching it. But it was like the whole planet was watching it. I was like, Ugh. So I caved. And the first few episodes, I was just like, this is the most confusing show I've ever seen. I, it's so confusing and really, it's quite shocking. But it's really addictive. So the new Game of Thrones is called House of the Dragon. It is set hundred, couple of hundred years before Game of Thrones. I'm not going to sort of do any spoilers or anything. If you like Game of Thrones, you'll very much like that. It's good. And if you're not into Game of Thrones, I don't know, let me know. Have you watched Game of Thrones? And if you haven't watched it, just because you haven't got around to it, or because you really don't fancy it, or have you seen it and loved it, or seen it and gone, ugh, interested to know in the comments. It's a bit of one of those sort of polarizing ones, isn't it? People either love it or hate it. Um, another question, um, two together actually. Do you think you'll ever get sick of going to Disney? I don't think so, because it's just such a magical place. It's my happy place. I wanted to take my children for such a long time and 
couldn't for various reasons and now as much as I'm able to I'd love to go and someone said dream holiday dream holiday would be I'd love to take them to the California the Anaheim Park because we've never been there and that's like the original one that Walt really had his hands on so I'd really love to do that but the dream holiday has got to be like run around Walt Disney World and like do all the manic things and then get on a Disney cruise that would be the dream because you do all the like the busy busy parks and then you get on the cruise which is way more chill obviously um we are doing like Paris trips at the moment because it's a lot more affordable because we've got the annual passes and it's more like a hundred pounds to get there um for a plane ticket rather than thousands to get across to America so it's not realistic to do Walt Disney World than a cruise for us but that's the dream that's the dream <laughs> Bistro chicken tray bake. Verdict? Or belly really clear? <laughs> belly clear up plate. Lover? Nice? I've got to say, we love Bistro. As you know, you know I always buy Bistro in the grocery hauls and things. This one is, it's different to the red one. They're both really, really, really nice and just make the meal really delicious. I can't decide which one's my favourite, but William is quite I passionate definitely about definitely prefer this one. You definitely prefer this one. I mean, they're both delish, but I'm glad we've, I'm glad that I stepped, you know, out a little bit and tried something slightly different. Bella, you enjoyed that? Yeah. <laughs> How can we tell with your clear plate? So this chicken tray bake really is a very, very simple meal to do. If you're not spending time chit-chatting to the camera in between, you can actually get stuff done while it's cooking. But not only is it simple to do, definitely cost effective and so yummy so thank you so much to Bisto. when they reached out to work with me it was an absolute no-brainer because it's like hey do you want to rave about a product that you love and use loads yes please <laughs> so i've enjoyed doing this very chatty cook with me let me know if you've got any other like ask me anything questions down in the comments and perhaps we'll do another very chatty vlog very very soon for now there is another vlog up on screen and then down here we've got the Disneyland Paris Halloween vlog series that you may enjoy. So thanks very much, guys. Bye! Bye.